to the Sound G Land show where everybody's upside down. Every day is upside down day in Sound Land. If you've been learning handstands with a coach, I'm pretty sure you've heard the cue push before. But why is this such a fundamental cue for handstands and what exactly does it mean? When you do handstands, the muscles surrounding your shoulder girdle take over a major role as stabilizers, just like your glutes do when you're standing on your feet. But the way the shoulders are stabilized is completely different from the glutes. As you may have heard in my interview with Doctor of Physical Therapy Emily Lezinski, the shoulder joint structure is way more complex and consists of way more moving parts than that of the hips. So when we talk about the shoulders, we need to not only consider the movement of the arms, but also how your shoulder blades, your clavicle move and sit on the ribcage. And technically, when we talk about push, we also need to consider your elbows and your wrists and your spine. But to keep it simple, let's just focus on the glenohumeral joint and the shoulder blades, the scapula. The loose structure of the shoulders makes them super movable and creates a wide spectrum of how we can move them. But when we handstand, we are asking the structures to move as little as possible and create stability in a very specific position. On top of that, these structures need to carry your body weight. When you're in a two-arm handstand, your shoulders can move in many different ways. They can flex and extend, or some might say open and close. They can elevate and depress, protract and retract. Your arm bones can externally rotate and internally rotate. Stability is created when a force is resisted with equal counterforce. The major force we're dealing with in a handstand is gravity pulling your body weight down. This leads to a tendency towards depression, extension or closing, and internal rotation and or retraction. So in other words, your shoulders drop and close, which might result in your elbows bending and your spine ar arching into a banana shape. So in order to counteract these tendencies, you need to flex, elevate, protract and externally rotate to varying degrees depending on your body and your level. All these actions in short can be described as the push. If you think this is complex, it gets even more complex than that. In a perfect world, you would lock your whole body in a line and do the balancing from your wrists only. But our world is not perfect and a handstand isn't static even though sometimes it may seem that way. But in reality, pushing means that you're constantly reacting to changes in your balance and dynamically coordinating all the muscles involved in stabilizing your scapula and glenohumeral joint depending on where gravity is pulling you and how strong it is pulling you. Your body has to learn to subconsciously or automatically react and counteract with the right dose of effort in the right direction to keep itself in balance. This happens through lots and lots of practice. I found it immensely valuable to have my students explore all the ways their shoulders move in handstand to create awareness around what happens as the position of the shoulders changes and how it influences all the other body parts. Practicing these shoulder isolations sets the foundation for basic shoulder awareness in handstands. You can practice it in chest to wall, back to wall, or even freestanding. Include these shoulder isolations into your warm up and see how they influence your balance stability. I hope this episode brought some clarity into the cue of push, which sometimes may seem trivial, but if you break it down for yourself and explore your tendencies, it can change your handstand game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know your thoughts and your experiences in the comments below. And it's never too late to do what you love. I can't wait to see you next Monday on the Soji Land Show. Bye.